Joe Biden says that the leader of the Islamic State group has been killed in an overnight raid in northwestern Syria. Idlib province is close to the Turkish border, and U.S. special forces stormed a building in the town of Atmi. This image was released by the White House. We see the president and the vice president, together with military chiefs, all watching a live feed of the operation. And we've heard from Joe Biden. Last night's operation took a major terrorist leader off the battlefield. And it sent a strong message to terrorists around the world. We will come after you and find you. Well, the White House also said that Al Qureshi detonated a bomb during the raid, blowing himself up, as well as members of his own family. This is the aftermath. It's estimated at least 13 people were killed, including six children. This is an eyewitness. In the middle of the night, we felt a windstorm. We went out and saw planes above us. Ten minutes later, we heard screams. Surrender! The house is surrounded. We heard fire. There was shelling from aeroplanes and machine guns. Well, here's more on what we know about this. Al Qureshi became the leader of IS in October 2019. He'd already played a major role in the 2014 jihadist campaign to kill and enslave the Yazidi religious minority in Iraq. He also oversaw IS's global operations. Have a listen to the assessment of the Pentagon spokesperson, John Kirby. Uh, Haji Abdullah was a very hands-on leader um, and uh, involved uh, in many day-to-day -day operations of ISIS and certainly uh, uh, keenly interested in uh, restoring uh, the, the uh, lethality uh, and the uh, higher op tempo uh, that ISIS had once to, enjoyed. Uh, so his death, we believe, dealt a significant blow uh, to ISIS. Well, here's more from our Middle East correspondent Anna Foster in Beirut. This was a late night raid in the town of Atma, which is very close to the border with Turkey. And what we're told is that US special forces moved in using multiple helicopters. People who were living in the area reported hearing loudspeakers with messages in Arabic telling women and children to leave the area. What is also interesting to note is the amount of fighting that clearly happened on the ground. This was a, a well fortified position. And we're told that when US special forces troops moved in, that there there were fighters ready to try and repel them on the ground. Those fighters had vehicles with anti-aircraft guns mounted on them and they put up stiff opposition to that US raid. Now we were told very early in the morning by the Pentagon that that raid had been a success. We didn't know immediately exactly what that meant. They said that none of the US special forces had been killed or injured in that raid. What we do know though is that 13 civilians lost their lives. The Syrian White Helmets who do humanitarian work in the area told us that they had recovered 13 bodies including six children and four women and they'd also ferried various people to hospital who were involved in what was going on there and then a few hours later it was confirmed by the US President Joe Biden that they had killed the leader of the Islamic State group, Abu Ibrahim al Qureshi. He's been in charge of the group since 2019, since the previous leader, Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi, was killed in an almost identical raid to this one by coalition forces in Syria. Let's bring in the BBC's Gary O'Donoghue in Washington. Gary, we heard uh, there from Anna talking about coalition forces in Syria. What is the degree of Joe Biden's military commitment to the situation there? Well, it's now pretty limited to uh, sort of training and support. Uh, there's, you know, there's been a formal end to US involvement in Iraq and Syria, uh, you know, over the last couple of years. But... There are troops there doing that kind of thing. But this operation demonstrates there's a clear commitment to, to carry out these counter-terrorism activities, particularly when they get reliable information. They've had this information apparently since December. They've been planning it since then. Mm -hmm. And Joe Biden gave the go-ahead for it on Tuesday. And I think it's interesting because if you cast your mind back, Joe Biden was against the, the, a similar kind of raid to take out Osama bin Laden in Pakistan back in 2011. Now, different country, different circumstances, but clearly he's now persuaded that these kinds of insertions are a good idea, uh, when actually the focus of US foreign policy is much more nowadays on 
sort of great power politics, China, Russia, what's happening in Ukraine, rather than the threat from the Islamic State group. Nonetheless, this will be uh, presented as an achievement for his administration. I wonder, though, if he has offered any broader thoughts to assist Syria finding any sort of long-term peace and stability. To what degree is the U.S. engaged in that intractable conflict? I think pretty silent and all that right now, to be honest. I think uh, the American focus is not really on that part of the world, as, as you know, and uh, the, the idea of not being involved in endless wars, as Joe Biden always puts it, is quite a, a big one here in Washington. So I don't think there's a lot of, of U.S. involvement in that. They are, as I say, trying, helping to cooperate and train and assist the Syrian Democratic Forces and the Kurdish forces in that, those parts of northern Syria and northern Iraq in that sort of border area. But beyond that, uh, I don't think there's a lot of involvement right now and a lot of focus. Uh, but obviously, when something like this comes along uh, and a high-value target like al Qureshi presents himself, uh, they can take that limited action to, to go in there and do it and get out. Uh, and they, they've had success this time around. OK, Gary. Thank you very much indeed.